Hello, today we are covering 2.2, Linear Functions and Slope. So um, you can read the objectives of today's lesson, but let's go ahead and move forward. So uh, this says graph at 6x minus 2y minus 12 equals 0 by finding the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So to find x-intercept, you're going to allow y to be 0. So if we let, if we want to find x-intercept, we let y equal 0. So then we get 6x minus 2 times 0 minus 12 equals 0. So 6x, this term completely cancels because it goes to a 0, minus 12 equals 0. 6x equals 12 from adding 12 to both sides to get it by itself. And then divide by 6 to get x equals 2. So that tells us that we have a point at 2, 0. So we can go to 2, 0 and make a point. That is our x-intercept. You see it um, is on the x-axis. So for the y-intercept, we can do the same thing except for the reverse. For y-intercept, we allow x to equal 0. So then we get 6 times 0 minus 2y minus 12 equals 0. So this first term is what's going to 0. So we have minus 2y minus 12 equals 0. So we can add 12 to both sides and get minus 2y equals positive 12. Divide by negative 2 to give us y equals negative 6. So that means our y-intercept is the point 0, negative 6. So when we graph that point, it's here. And then we can connect those to show what our line looks like. And it's always important to go ahead and label your points just so it's clear. So that is how we can find um, a line and graph it when we find the x and y intercepts. So this goes over the definition of a slope. You can read it for yourself, but what I want you to remember is the slope is basically how much you rise over how much you move to the left or the right, right? So let's take a look. If I wanted to draw a positive slope, I know that it rises. So that means it's going in a direction like this. If I want to draw a negative, a line with a negative slope, it's going to be falling. So it's going to look something like this. A zero is a horizontal line. So this is when the slope is equal to zero. And then we have what's called an undefined slope. That occurs when we have a vertical line. So if we want to find the slope of this function here, first we can say, okay, is it going to be negative or positive slope? Well, we see that the line is falling, so we know already that it's a negative slope. So I'm just going to put a negative there. And then we can identify two points and see what uh, happens here. So if you just use the points that are here, we can see that this point is at positive 7 on the y-axis, and this point is at positive 7 on the x-axis. So what we're doing here is we're going down 7, so with the minus, down 7, and over 7, because it's rise over run. So we get negative 7 over 7, which just simplifies to negative 1. And it falls. So here we want to find the slope of the line that passes through the given points and then indicates whether the line rises, falls, or is horizontal or vertical. So for the formula for a slope, I'll just remind you from one of the previous slides, it's m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the change in y over the change in x. 
So it doesn't matter how you label your points, but I'm just going to label them so that I remember. I'm going to make this first one x1, y1, and the second one x2, y2. So then m equals 15 minus 3 over negative 4 minus 5. So 15 minus 3 gives me a positive 12. Anytime that I have a minus here, I can write this as plus a negative. So that makes it a little more clear that this is going to be negative 9. So I can pull that negative to the front and reduce. So 12 and 9 are both divisible by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So our slope here is negative 4 thirds. We can do the same thing for the next one. Again, it doesn't matter how you label the points, but I'm just going to label them here. So we have negative 9 minus 7 over negative 5 minus negative 5. So if we think about our rules again, this could be plus a negative here when we think about negative rules. So we get negative 16. Over here we have minus minus. So that actually becomes plus a positive when we have two negatives right next to each other. So this is actually 0. So anytime we get zero at the bottom, that means that it's undefined, which indicates that it's a vertical line. And this one we didn't label, but let's go ahead. Because it's negative right here, we know it falls. So let's try this last one. I'm going to do 8 minus 8 over 3 minus negative 4. And I see here 8 minus 8 is 0 over, I can make this a plus a positive to give me a positive 7. Anytime we have 0 on top, that means that our slope is 0 because anything divided, 0 divided by anything is still 0, which indicates a horizontal line. So here is a definition of a linear function and slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is what most students remember for graphing because it really helps with graphing. Slope-intercept form is f of x, or y, is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So that means that you have a point 0, b where you touch the y-axis. So solve the given equation for y, and that gets us into the y equals mx plus b form, so the slope-intercept form, and then we can graph fairly easily from there. So we have that y is equal to 5x minus 6 here. So we know that whatever's in front of x is our slope. And we like usually slopes in fraction form, right? So since it's a 5, anytime you have a whole number, you can put that over 1. Because anything divided by 1 is just itself, right? So this means that we're going to rise 5 and run 1. Then we have this minus 6 here. The negative goes with it because our original form is y equals mx plus b. So since we have this negative here, it's going to go with it. So we have a point zero negative 6 for our y-intercept. So if I plot the point 0, negative 6, and my slope is 5 over 1, so I go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that would be at negative 1, and I go over 1, so that would be here. So then we connect those and label our points. So this first one was our y-intercept, 0, negative 6, and the second one, 1, negative 1, is our next point.
So here we have 3x plus 4y equals 12. So this is not in slope intercept form. So we're going to go ahead and solve for y to find it in slope intercept form. So 3x plus 4y equals 12. I'm solving for y, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides to give me 4y equals 12 minus 3x. So then we can divide by 4 on both sides. So we get y equals 12 divided by 4 gives me 3. And then we have minus 3 fourths x. So that can be written in slope-intercept form as negative 3 fourths x plus 3. So I can go ahead and graph that by first graphing the y-intercept. We know that the plus 3 here gives us a y-intercept of 0, 3. And then we have minus 3 fourths, which means I'm going to use the minus to indicate I'm going to go down instead of up this time. So I'm going down 1, 2, 3, and then over 4. So I'm going to have this point here. And connect those to get our line. So the y-intercept was 0, 3, and this point here is 4, 0. All right, I'm going to give you a second to pause and try this one on your own. Uh, then you can check the notes that are posted in Blackboard to make sure that you did it correctly. It's important to try these on your own and make sure that you're grasping the concept. So go ahead and pause now. All right, so let's take a look at this one. This is going over horizontal lines. What we know about horizontal lines is that they always have a slope of zero. So since the slope is zero, our m is zero. And they are written in the form of y equal to a number or f of x equal to a number. We let f of x represent y when we're talking about functions. So if we take a look here, if you think about what this would look like, it would be y equals mx plus b. If we looked at the slope intercept form, well, that means we have a slope of zero, x plus b. So we get y equal to b, right? So our intercept is whatever that value y is. So in this case, we have f of x equals negative 4. So our intercept is at negative 4. So we're going to go to the point 0, negative 4. And then because we have a slope of 0, we know it's a horizontal line. That means we are drawing a line here at negative 4. So for vertical lines, the slope of a vertical line is undefined. because division by zero is undefined. And what happens is you get a zero on the bottom of your slope and we can't have that. We don't know what to do with that. Um, so we have, gra uh, we have that x equals six. So when we're dealing with vertical lines, we have an x equal to a value instead of y equal to a value. So our slope is undefined. And in this case, because x equals 6, we're not going to touch the y-axis because we're going to have a vertical line at 6. And so we're never going to touch the y-axis, so we will not have a y-intercept. So... Um, here, the vertical line passing through negative 4. If we want to write that, we know that with a vertical line, we're talking about x equals. And if it passes through negative 4, 0, the x value is what we're using here. A horizontal line is y equals to a number, and it's the y value of the point that they give us, so y equals 7. So write an equation for a line having a slope of 0, 
So slope of zero, remember, is a y equals. And so we're going to use the y value here. And then write an equation for a line that passes through 4, negative 5 that has a slope that is undefined. Undefined slope means we're looking at x equals. So it's going to be the x at value. All right. So find the slope intercept equation of the line that has a slope of negative 9 fifths and passes through the point 0, negative 6. So since this is 0, negative 6, we know that this is our y-intercept, right? Because if we graph the point 0, negative 6, we would have a point down here at negative 6. So with that being understood, we can simply write this if we're looking at point intercept slope. We know it's y equals mx plus b, so the slope was given as negative 9 fifths. And then we have our x that goes with the slope, plus here we're going to use the y value, negative 6. So we can go ahead and deal with that negative by rewriting it as y equals negative 9 fifths x minus 6. Then we have what's called point slope form. This is when you're given a slope and you're given a point that isn't the y-intercept. That makes it a little more difficult. So when you're given a point that isn't a y-intercept, you're still using the slope and you're using y and x, but you have some point x1, y1 that you're substituting into this formula. So let's try it with this first example here. So I'm just going to rewrite my formula so I know what I'm doing. Writing an equation in point slope form of a line with a slope of 6 that passes through the point 2, negative 5. So 2 is my x1 and negative 5 is my y1. And then my slope is my m, so that's 6. So I'm going to have y minus negative 5 equals 6 times x minus 2. So we know from before that if we have two negatives, it becomes plus a positive. So we get y plus 5 equals, we can go ahead and distribute this 6 to both terms. So we get 6x minus 12. Now we just need to solve for y, which means we need to isolate y. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides, and we get y equals 6x. We have negative 12 minus 5. So if we have negative 12 minus 5 here, um, if you think about that, that's plus a negative like we've done before. So you're going to get negative 17. So let's try another one. Find an equation of the line having a slope. So we know slope is m, negative 4 fifths and that passes through the point y, or 1, negative 9. So x1 is 1, and y1 is negative 9. So we know our formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we can substitute in. We have y minus negative 9 equals 1 times x minus not 1, my slope is negative 4 fifths, right? Negative 4 fifths, x minus 1. There we go. So we can deal with this negative negative. We know that's y plus 9 equals. We can distribute this negative 4 fifths to both terms. So we get negative 4 fifths x. And then a negative times a negative gives us a positive 4 fifths here. So when we do that, we can subtract 9 from both sides. So if I subtract 9 from both sides, on the left-hand side, we're going to get y equals this negative 4 fifths x comes straight down. And then we have to combine 4 fifths and negative 9. So I'm going to do a quick re fraction review with you. So if you have 4 fifths minus 9, that 9 can be written over 1, right? And to be able to subtract, we have to have the same denominator. So to get the same denominator, we're going to multiply by the denominator here 
on the top and bottom because that keeps the integrity. So we have four fifths minus nine times five is 45 and one times five is five. So now we have four minus 45. So if we have four minus 45 on top, that's going to give us a negative 41 over five. So here, we're going to have negative 41 over five. All right, so I'm going to allow you to do this one and the next problem on your own. So pause your screen here work this problem and then I'll wait a second for you to pause your screen on the next one, work the problem, and then check your answers against the annotated notes that are posted in Blackboard. And you want to pause for this one, work it out, and check your notes on Blackboard. All right, so that's the conclusion of 2.2 and we will pick up at 2.3 next time.